Hi everyone, welcome to day four of our Clear Skin Challenge. Today is all about removing the top six acne triggers in your food. So we have talked about checking your supplements for acne triggers, mm -hmm. removing pore clogging ingredients from your skincare, hair care, body care, makeup. We've talked about exfoliation and now we are talking about diet. Mm -hmm. So let's kick it off with one of the absolute biggest causes of acne when it comes to diet, dairy. dairy. <laughs> Most people kind of know this, they just don't know how much of a factor it is. The way that you test your tolerance for dairy is to completely cut it out for at least two weeks. That should be enough time to tell. You'll notice a reduction in inflammation in the chin zone. Dairy gets you right here. It's almost unmistakable and it's pretty much a guarantee. So when you cut it out for about two weeks and then you reintroduce it by having some Alfredo, some cheese, what have you, whatever you want to do you'll notice what it does because it'll pop up the next day. So you'll see, okay, I can get away with maybe two bites of cheese or I can have one serving of dairy maybe once a month. Uh, maybe everyone's a, a little bit different. Or a sheep's milk is a better exactly. option testing out how your body reacts to those. Exactly. So the reason that dairy has such a problematic effect on acne prone skin is because of something called insulin-like growth factor hormone. Hormone and growth are the key words there. So what that means is that it's from a giant mama cow who's big and hairy. She's telling her little baby cow to grow and get big and hairy as well. So what happens with these hormones is they act on our hair follicle receptors and our hormone receptors generally down right here. And it tells our sebum to hyper produce and it makes the oil very thick and sticky. So what that means is a big problem for anyone who's acne prone. We've already got a little more oil. We've already got a lot of skin protein. Protein. So when you start adding fuel to that fire, which dairy does in a major way, it creates uncontrollable cystic acne that is very, very deep under the skin and is usually cystic. In my opinion, it is just not worth it. Cheese is delicious. I miss <laughs> it. I'd rather, rather have good skin. <laughs> but everyone has a different threshold. Yeah. So cut it out for two weeks, reintroduce it, find what works for you. The next one is caffeine. So a great rule of thumb is anything that speeds you up is most likely gonna break you out. Yes, so caffeine is one of those things that is very unique to the mm -hmm. individual. Um, Kaylee and I still have it from time to time. Yeah. I generally stick to a chai tea latte or a matcha, mm -hmm. something like that. Coffee is acidic. It has no nutritional value. It's usually loaded with like mold and byproducts mm -hmm. and other things that we don't need in our system. Uh, and what it does is it gets you going, gets you revved up, which feels really nice, but it also gets immediately filtered out through our lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is gonna get you right here and right here, um, and sometimes in the neck as well. So if you've already got detoxification issues or you're sick or your, uh, your system's just a little bit built Going up. Going through adrenal fatigue. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of things can affect your mm -hmm. lymphatic system. Not digesting food properly, eating too late at night, drinking alcohol regularly. The first thing that you're going to notice if you're having too much caffeine is little bumps right here, right at the ends of your eyebrows and in your temple area. This is a big uh, pathway of your lymphatic system in your face, uh, and it's something that the caffeine dehydration specifically gets us right there. So if you can feel little bumps right here, cut out coffee. It's gonna take a little while for them to go away. You'll wanna clear out your lymphatic system, do some hot yoga, do an infrared sauna. You can take some herbs for lymph detox. Um, anything that supports your liver is gonna probably also help your lymphatic system too. So focus on detoxing if you're getting little bumps in your temples right there. It's a sign of too much too much backed up in your lymphatic system and it's time to do some house cleaning. And do beware if you are looking for caffeine alternatives that you're not replacing it with a very sugary alternative. So you're not going to getting a chai tea with sweetened almond milk and lots of pumps of flavoring and lots of sugar. So make sure when you are replacing coffee that you are being aware of the sugar content mm -hmm. in everything and just making sure it's a very clean version of whatever you decide to replace it with. All right, the next one that we wanna talk about is alcohol. So mm. alcohol can be, I know you don't wanna hear it, it can be, it can be a big, big acne trigger um, and just something that you wanna make sure you're doing in moderation and another one that is really good to test out with the removal process as well. Right, alcohol is one of those things where everyone responds a little differently yeah. to it. 
You'd know if alcohol makes you break out. It usually comes the very next day. Night of drinking, you wake night up with some breakouts. You wake up, it's going to happen. Here's how you minimize that. You still got to have your fun. We always recommend fun. Here's how you can do it without affecting your skin so poorly. Uh, stick to clear drinks. Vodka soda, a little bit of lime and lemon, it's generally the best way to go. Uh, wine and champagne are generally going to be the ones that cause more acne, especially in the lymphatic system, like right here mm -hmm. and right here. They also have sulfites in them, which can't be broken down by the body, and it actually creates a histamine response, which will also get you in your lymphatic area. So there's a couple things to think about when you're selecting, when you're ordering, which drink you want. Mm -hmm. Bartender, vodka soda, lots of lime. There you go. <laughs> if you are a wine drinker and you are like, I don't want any other alcohol, all I want to drink is wine, I will drink it in moderation, I won't have it all the time, I just really, really want my wine, a great alternative. Now, we can't, prof we can't promise it won't break you out, but here is a very good alternative and a better bet to that might not break, break you out is wine that has no added sugar to it. Some wines can have up to over 100 grams of added sugar. A company we love is called Seco Wine. I know there are other companies out there as well that's personally just the one I love and I use. I can trust it has no, um, no added sugar. It has kind of an old world process to it. Um, also, if you are at a wine and liquor store looking for wine, you wanna head to the Italian wine section and you look for a little label towards the top. It's labeled DOCG or DOC that basically means it's very very highly regulated wine from Italy that and make sure that the process of air is a very old world um, process which means you know how wine should be made without all the added um, ingredients and flavorings and sugar and all that stuff so again if you're in a wine store look for the label DOCG or DOC so you know it is a very highly regulated wine as with uh, everything it's kind of hard to uh, let me, let me think of what I want to say. All right. On top of those tips, which are very, very good, especially if you're a wine drinker, another hack that I use and that I recommend to people is taking bromelain before you drink. Yes. Oh my, I forgot about that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Bromelain That's been a game is my changer. boy. <laughs> Obsessed with bromelain. Bromelain has so many uses. Yeah. It's just pineapple extract. It's mm -hmm. powdered. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Yeah. I like the doctor's formula best. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the highest concentration and it works. We both use that brand. We both use it. it. I have three of them shipped to me on auto delivery <laughs> from Amazon every month I and I go out. through every single time. So, Alcohol also raises histamines. It's an inflammatory mm -hmm. substance. Everyone knows that. It's super fun, so we do it. How can you minimize the inflammatory response and minimize the histamine reaction that comes? Take bromelain. It's a natural antihistamine. You can also pop a Claritin or an Allegra, but we prefer to go the natural mm -hmm. way whenever we can, and bromelain is a great way to do that. Another use of bromelain that I really, really like is to take it on an empty stomach right before bed. If you do that, even after you've had a day of drinking or poor eating or what have you, it will still help your body maintain a low level of inflammation, and that's always good for your skin as well as everything yeah. else in your body. Alcohol, processed foods, can't, um, too much sugar, caffeine, all these are um, inflammatory, so mm -hmm. bromelain is just going to help because it's an anti-inflammatory, so it's going to help bring that all down, so it is, we love it for acne and just in, just in well-being in general. Love bromelain. Yeah. Get some. <laughs> all right, next up we have soy. So we talked a little bit about soybean oil when it came to pore clogging ingredients in skincare. Now we're talking about it about it in the food that you eat, and it can come in a lot of different forms. Yes. It can come in an oil form. It can come in um, the meat alternative. Like all the, a yes. lot of the vegan meats are soy-based, soy milk. Um, gosh, you can find it everywhere. <laughs> you find it in everything. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular filler agent. And it's cheap. Yeah. So it's very attractive for companies to use. Uh, you'll find it in everything from cosmetics to dog food to conditioner to uh, baby products. I mean, it's literally everywhere. So when you're consuming soy, moderation is everything. It does, soybeans, for example, they're in their natural state. They have a lot of other benefits to them. They have healthy fats. They have polyphenols. They have some other really good qualities to them. I do eat soybeans occasionally. I just don't do it every day. Now, when you get into the soy products like tofu, soy protein, meat alternatives, um, soy protein isolate, any of those bars, shakes, things like that, that's where it gets really dicey. By then, it's extremely processed. It is not in its natural state. It's probably devoid of any nutrition that it had in the beginning. And it's difficult for your body to break down because it doesn't really know what it is. 
textured soy protein. What's what that? Is that? <laughs> I what don't is really want to know. <laughs> so when you're eating soy products, make sure they're um, as close to not being processed as possible in their organic state. Uh, what happens if you eat a lot of it though, When you, if you're a vegan or you're vegetarian and you're eating a lot of soy products multiple times a week, what I have seen in people's skin is an outbreak of aggressive inflamed acne generally on the cheeks. Why this happens is because soy has phytoestrogens in it uh, and they basically mimic your natural estrogen. So they so hop into phytoestrogen, fake estrogen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it goes into your estrogen receptors because it looks like estrogen, passes like it, but it's about a thousand times weaker than it actually is. Uh, it's far, far, far weaker than your normal estrogen. So not only has it kicked your real estrogen out, so it's still floating around your body, but it's basically an imposter estrogen not doing the same work. So what does that mean? It means your testosterone, your androgens, all your male hormones are going to be more powerful in contrast, and that is what stimulates extra acne. So that is something to be really mindful of. If you've been eating a ton of soy, now's a great time to do a little bit of a detox on it. Stop eating it for about two weeks, two to three weeks, you'll see your reduction in inflammation, and then you can start having it maybe once a week. And just make sure it's a really good quality, like organic soybeans. All right, the next, oh no, we have two more to talk about. Sorry guys, <laughs> we have two more. Uh, we have a lot more of these on our website as well, but we really want to address some of the bigger ones. Um, so the next one is gluten. Um, this can be a huge problem for people that are ranging from um, a gluten sensitivity to a gluten allergy to celiac, which is an autoimmune disease triggered um, by gluten. But basically what gluten does in the body is it goes in and, it, and we're talking about the gluten that exists today, um, not the gluten that existed 70, 80, 100 years ago. It is very different now. It is overly processed now and there's millions of strains when there wasn't as many strains in the good old days. <laughs> so it is, it is, it's just simply not the same, which is why we've had so many gluten sensitivity, allergies, celiac, all these different things emerge pretty like in the last 10, 20 years. Um, so what gluten does when you eat it, it bores little holes in your intestines and actually breaks down your gut lining as well. So it allows food particles in your digestive system to leak out into the rest of your body, which can lead to mm -hmm. leaky gut, um, can lead to depleting uh, the nutrients and gut bacteria in your gut. And what it's gonna do is it's going to basically hinder your body to be able, from being able to digest and break down and move food through properly. So all this food particles are floating around your body, it's causing inflammation, things don't know where to go, and any inflammation in the body can trigger acne, because mm. acne is an inflammatory condition. So a good rule of thumb is anything that causes inflammation in the body can cause acne, and so gluten is a major trigger, and because it depletes other vitamins in your body, vitamins that your body needs to keep your skin clear, there's a lot of things that happen that basically fight against clear skin when you are eating gluten. True, true. And I have found that gluten, especially for those of us who have a trouble digesting protein, which is actually a lot of people, uh, gluten is a protein that we don't digest well. So what happens to proteins specifically that aren't digested well or that are under digested in the system is they get flushed out through your lymphatic system. So that can lead to all sorts of breakouts right here. It can lead to breakouts under the jaw right here and it can travel down the neck. So if you're experiencing any sort of acne in this area, gluten is one of the first things that you should try an elimination diet for. And our last big acne sugar that we're gonna talk about is eggs. Eggs, yeah. I unfortunately loved eggs and I <laughs> cut out other meats and started eating eggs every day. They were organic, they are from the farmer's market. I was like, great, this is how I'm gonna get my B vitamins and some vitamin D. Unfortunately, eggs, specifically egg whites, which we thought were the healthiest chicken part. eggs, too. Yeah, because yeah. some people don't have issues with other eggs. So this is a little more geared towards chicken eggs in chicken general. Eggs. Yeah. yeah, the, the main the eggs. The main ones, people. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> little quail eggs and sushi is fine. <laughs> uh, but chicken eggs specifically, uh, the egg whites in particular, have a protein called albumin. It's very, very hard to digest. And as I kind of mentioned before, any protein that is hard to digest or that gets under digested gets filtered out through our lymphatic system. So what happened when I start eating eggs is that my entire under my neck right here 
exploded with cystic acne. This had never happened to me before. Even though I've been breaking out my entire life, that had never happened before, and it was absolutely because I was eating eggs. Now, not only do they have the indigestible protein of albumin, but they also have a naturally occurring rate of progesterone that is very high. It's a chicken's menstrual material, so there's a lot of hormones in it. So that's something that you really wanna be careful of, especially if you're hormone conscious. Another reason that we have learned that eggs are inflammatory, and this applies to chicken as well, is something called arachidonic acid. This is very uh, not widely talked about at all. This is, this is up here, but it is something that I do believe is going to be talked about more. Arachidonic acid is found in chicken and eggs in a very high amount, and what it does is the fatty omega-6 acid that is extremely inflammatory so eating a lot of chicken which happened to kaylee actually recently yeah, i broke out really bad because really i was bad. buying a rotisserie chicken every single week to break apart make salads with and it was too much for my body it was just too mm -hmm. much um and eating a bunch of eggs so eggs there's three key reasons why eggs are inflammatory and specifically acne aggressors so if you're breaking out cut out eggs completely for now once your skin has calmed down a little bit you can have eggs maybe once a week but i'd still be very very careful and on it for looking about looking after your skin um let me start so what I recommend is if you are breaking out, cut out eggs completely for a couple of weeks, especially if you've been eating a lot of them. Just cut them out for about two weeks. That's enough time for it to filter out through your system and to hit reset. And then try having one serving of eggs per week and be really careful to take notice of any effect that it has on your skin. Eggs in particular break people out right here and right here. It's extremely common. I see it all the time. Um, try it and you'll know what your threshold is. That's what we recommend for all of these elimination diets. Thank you for joining us for day four of the Clear Skin Challenge. We will see you again tomorrow for the last and final day. See you tomorrow.